Before we get going from this episode, I want to thank one of my fellow YouTube creators for sending me stickers all the way from Australia from the Outback Shed. Really cool. He's got some uh, interesting designs here that you like put on windows that'll uh, make them see through. They're not uh, typically backed, you know, in color. Very cool. Check out the shipping from Australia. Whew. Ouch. And I was very generous of him. Thanks for sending me these. I really appreciate it. And I'll put one up on my board. Also wanted to say I appreciate uh, our international friends still talking to us considering how we've been uh, treating the rest of the world with total disrespect and contempt. So my apologies. That's not all of us. This time around, I have an unusual project. I'm probably not the only one with one of these inexpensive. This is a Shars face mill. And the one thing I noticed about these is that the inserts are not all equal height relative to the plane of the bottom of the cutter. And it's probably because the inserts have variations and also maybe the pockets in these aren't perfectly cut. That's probably the case. Considering that if you bought a Sandvik version of this, it'd be thousands of dollars and this was like a hundred or two hundred dollars. So there's a huge price discrepancy. So I don't expect to have the same kind of precision. Uh, the bottom is not canted on this one. Uh, so the mounting is fine. Uh, this is an R8 based uh, holder. So typically you don't use an end mill, I mean a face mill this big, you know, in a milling machine uh, unless you have the power to do it. And three horsepower like mine is probably on the iffy side for something this big, but I use it on aluminum. So these are positive rake inserts. So getting back to the point at hand is that typically uh, these inserts are not all the same height. And most of the cutting is done by the, you know, the insert that sticks out the farthest. And it, ideally, you'd like to have them all very similar so they'd all pull up some of the effort of cutting the material. So what I thought I'd do is I'd make a tool to be able to measure the height of the, the individual inserts and then maybe make adjustments with shims or something. I don't know. Uh, I, I've seen it done on some of the CNC channels before, but of course, they're using something like a Sandvik and, or, you know, or a Kenna Metal, one of the big brands, or Iskar. Uh, this, again, is an inexpensive face mill, so I don't know if I'll be able to make that work, but I would like to be able to measure it and see how far out it is. And I have a feeling that this particular one is way out. So one solution to do this might be to make a custom R8 receiver female side that I could set this in with some maybe bearings so you could rotate it. But why do that when you can get a whole spindle? And now I know you're thinking, oh, a spindle, total overkill. A lot of expense for just a simple tool like this. I gotta tell you, another Chinese amazing feature. This R8 spindle was about $100. The grind looks pretty good inside for the R8 uh, collet. And uh, it's got preloaded bearings already on it. Now I'm sure they're not ABIC 7 bearings, but we don't need that for this. I'm sure they're gonna be adequate. So I thought I'd give this a try uh, it's going to kill some of you because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the shaft off of this spindle so that I can build a small enough fixture that will fit on my workbench and one of my height gauges can hold an indicator over these points and still rotate this around all in plane. And that's my goal. So I guess the first thing I'm going to press off this bearing down here. I'll have an excess extra bearing at the end and then I'll put this in the lathe and I will hopefully cut this off. I don't know how hard this is but we will find that out soon enough. And we'll just cut this guy off so that I have enough room for the R8 collet to fit in. Also enough room that if I decide to make a pull bar for this, uh, that I can, uh, that will hold this deep into the socket. But there's not gonna be, gravity's probably gonna be more than adequate, so I'm not really worried about that. So I'm not gonna leave a whole lot of extra space at the end. It looks like I may not have to press this off. It's held on by a C-clip. Also looking at how easily this uh, spindle scratch on my screwdrivers next to it lets me know that it's probably not terribly hard. Okay, so it's still on there, but we might be able to tap it off now. Um, yeah, so I don't think the shaft is particularly hard. There's a nice ding there. There's some scratches here, so I think I should be able to cut it on the lathe without too much effort. One bearing off. 
This bottom bearing is a YMB6206Z. This bearing sells on Amazon for about $15. Obviously not a super precision bearing. So we're gonna remove this guy. Fortunately, these bearings, I can hold on to this and it'll spin freely in my hand when I get close to the end. There's a keyway here, so it's gonna be an interrupted cut for part of it. I am gonna lock off my travel in this direction so that this becomes a, a fixed operation. Well, the bearings are uh, smooth. I was worried how this was gonna cut. It's actually cutting really easily. And it's case hardened, because now it's much softer on the inside. You see the chips change? Now the chips are stringy. Before the chips were uh, coming off very short. There we go. Nice clean cut. This leaves me with a spline shaft of case hardened material, although not super hard. I don't know what I'll do with it, but uh, save it might be useful for something. That's me, I'm always uh, saving everything. <laughs> Cut a piece of hollow tube. Gonna face the two sides real quick. If you're wondering why I'm putting the center here, it's just as a safety. I don't think it's going anywhere. I don't think this part's going anywhere, but it's just in case it comes loose. I'm grabbing on the inside of this part and it's reasonably tight. This will be the bottom. So when I flip it around and grab it and it damages the inside, That'll be before I have bored it out for the size of the bearings, so we'll be good. As another precaution, I am not standing anywhere near this side of this part. Just gonna give a little chamfer, clean up these edges. You can tell that it's not on center exactly either. Now we can flip this 180, then we'll face the other side here and uh, then we'll bore it out for the bearing diameter. bargain basement spindle find that it's almost nothing it uh, if in the fixture there I have a little bit of slop and maybe the bearings have a little bit of slop I couldn't tell which exactly but rotating it only out by maybe one to two tenths that's it it's pretty impressive all right so this is a nice fit very smooth the bearings are pretty darn tight in there there's the tiniest bit of play um, Next, you just set the uh, R8 uh, collet in there. And I should be able to go backwards, rotating backwards, and measure the height of all these inserts and maybe adjust them so they're closer. All right, so we've got the height stand set up here with an indicator. I had to make a special adapter to hold this indicator. So there's my high spot at 50 for this one. So this one, the high spot is almost a full thousandth under. This one is right on the money. That one is a couple tenths over. That one's almost a thousandth under, about eight tenths. That one's like a tenth over.
and it's almost a full thousandth. So I got a variation of a couple thousandths across the face of these uh, inserts. I don't know if I can fix them, but you know, as long as we're here, why don't we try? So what I'll do is I'll find the extreme ones like this one, and I'll see if I can bring it down. So this guy was low, so I thought I'd take some zigzag paper and stick it underneath the insert. That one's pretty close. And the one I just fixed that was over a thousand under is now a thousandth over. Interesting, huh? So you can compensate. Look at that. It may move around on me, but that's an interesting idea. So you can shim these guys up. Zigzag paper might work. Here's the second one I fixed with cigarette paper. So zigzag paper can work. I think a better solution, probably you order some shim stock in plastic. Uh, that would handle coolant better and maybe not break down. So we'll try that. But now you know you can get your your inserts a lot more level than they are straight when you put them in. And uh, I did try a different insert from a different manufacturer and it was, the low ones were still low. So I think the pockets are just a little bit off. I guess the other thing you could do is get in there with a file and just adjust the pocket size a little bit so that they all match better. That's another solution. But the only way you'll know is to have a device like this where you can actually test it. Well, that's my take. I'd love to hear other people's opinions on this project. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. I hope you find it useful. Hope to see you next time.